Um, so good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to the second series of uh, lectures on Knowledge Plus. We had a very, very successful session last year uh, where we hosted a series of uh, four lectures um, and various topics uh, related to dispensing uh, and uh, with the support of uh, SLO. So thanks to Anand Lakshmi. Um, and now uh, we are continuing that same series with again support from uh, SLO India. And this series of lectures is going to, uh, you know, look at various aspects of uh, presbyopia. Um, um, yes, we know that, you know, we've had multiple series of lectures on uh, progressive dispensing and, you know, how to upgrade and all of that. But uh, we thought we'll be bring in a different flavor to this series of uh, lectures. So I'll keep that as a surprise as to what we're going to, uh, you know, uh, deal with uh, in the next um, few minutes and also in this series in terms of you know we'll be having uh, one like such lecture once in two months um, and there'll be six such lectures which will over over the period of next one year so we plan to continue this uh, aspect uh, of continuing education and uh, now I'd like to welcome all of you hope you en enjoy the session and I'd also like to tell you that uh, all the previous sessions that we've had with SLOR and all the others are all available on the OCI YouTube channel. You can always go and, you know, uh, look for these sessions and uh, gain from the knowledge that the various speakers have uh, given as well. So uh, welcome once again. Thanks to Anand Lakshmi for your support, uh, Anand. And now I'd like to hand over to Anita, who is the education head uh, for, for our education section of Optometry Council of India. Over to you, Anita. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, Lakshmi. A very good afternoon and warm welcome to everyone who has joined us for the first webinar of the Knowledge Plus series brought to you by the Optometry Council of India. So as uh, Lakshmi has announced, uh, this is going to be a webinar which would be conducted once in two months. So it, this will be live streamed at the uh, Optometry Council of India uh, Facebook page as well as uh, on the Zoom platform. So I, once again, I welcome each one of you who have joined us this afternoon for this very interesting session. And this uh, session is going to be conducted by um, a very renowned optometrist, Mr. Prem Sudhakar Lawrence. Prem Sudhakar is working as an assistant uh, professor at Department of Optometry, SRM Medical College Hospital and Research Institute, Tamil Nadu. He has his own independent optometric practice named Frame Optics and Vision Center at Chennai. He's a graduate from Elite School of Optometry. He holds a master's degree in optometry and also has a fellowship in IACL. Currently, he's pursuing his doctorate at SRM Institute of Science and Technology. He has experience in hospital and retail optometry in India and optical outlets abroad. He has worked in various positions in retail optometry from optometrist to managing the professional services department at Lawrence and Mayo South and East India. His areas of interest include contact lenses, dispensing optics and optics in general. And today's topic is going to be on psychology of a presbyo and why progressive addition lenses. Joining him today as panelist is Ms. Anant Lakshmi, who is the Head of Education and Professional Services for Essilor Laksotika. So welcome Anant Lakshmi and welcome Prem Sudhakar. So over to you Prem to take us to this very interesting topic, uh, a relatively untouched topic I would say on the psychology of a presbyope and why progressive addition lenses. Over to you Prem. Thank you Anita and thank you Lakshmi. Um, thanks for the introduction. I'll just share my screen right now. Just a minute. So you are able to see the screen? Is it visible? Yes, yes. Yeah. So um, good evening, everybody. Um, 
Today's topic is uh, psychology of a presbyope and why progressive audition lenses. As Anita said, this is a topic which is slightly different, which is not uh, discussed um, in general. Uh, if you see, mostly it is uh, what is discussed is the designs and the types of progressives and how to fit the progressives measurements and so on and so forth. But this is something slightly different. You know, why we have to uh, also understand the psychology of a presbyope. So understanding a presbyopic patient's psychology who wants to see, feel, look young could help us offer better solutions to him. In an era where products have become very homogeneous and the interaction between the practitioner and the patient a little plastic, to truly understand the patient's apprehensions and connect it with the solution is the need of the hour and makes a very good practice standard. My name is Prem Sudhakar. I work as an assistant professor at SRM Medical College and Research Center. So first, what is presbyopia? So as we all know, presbyopia is a normal age-related change in vision due to decreased lens elasticity and accommodative ability, resulting in reduced abil ability to focus vision on near tasks. So psychologists, um, you know, actually uh, at 40, move you from a young adult to a middle age. Right, uh, middle age is something uh, where there is a lot of uh, apprehensions, and um, you know, psychologists divide this into two uh, parts. The first part, where they call it as an accumulation, and the second part, they call it as an edit. In the sense that the first part, that is, um, uh, till forty, there is a lot of accumulation of uh, you know uh, things like uh, family and wealth and job and respect responsibility and uh, relationships, personal as well as community uh, responsibilities. So there are so many things which are accumulated in the first 40 years of age. And the next 40 years of age, psychologists say we think a little bit about what has happened in the first 40 years. So whether I am in the right career, should, should there be a change um, in the way I look at things? Um, uh, what is the perspective? There is a lot of uh, gap between the expectations and reality and uh, so we call the psychologist called a line in the sand which probably means that you know when a line is drawn either there are two choices in front of a uh, presby of either to you know limit himself inside that uh, boundary or go over it and uh, explore more so we are going to talk more about an young presby uh, the reason being that you know a presby who is already in his late 40s or 50s would have already understood that he requires a certain correction. Whether he, um, whether he uh, bears that correction, whether he willingly takes up something, that's a different point altogether. But he is of a certain acceptance that he has to wear some kind of a correction. He requires a certain kind of correction. But a young presbyo, for that matter, who is entering into the 40 years of age, probably has more apprehension. So we will see what is the psyche behind this. Imagine a 40-year-old is told he requires glasses for Nia. What is the first answer we get? Probably something like this, right? You say 40 years and that's it, right? So we, the, mostly the, uh, the, we uh, get answers uh, from our questions from the patients which are pretty defensive. Something like, why I require glasses? I was able to see clearly for so long. Why is that I'm not able to see now? I had strong eyes, I still have strong eyes, but why is that I'm not able to see close uh, objects? Won't it go away? Will it get better? Even they even relate with uh, their grandparents who don't, maybe they didn't use glasses. So even my grandparents don't use glasses. Or uh, sometimes they even ask, will exercise help in removing power? So what is the reason behind being so defensive? Why is that they don't accept that they require a certain help in terms of looking near? There is something which psychologists call as denial. Okay, we will see a little bit more in denial. So what is this denial and why? So if you see this picture, this person, this individual is looking at a tablet at a close of work and he is having problems looking uh, at the near very clearly. Now, why is this happening? So what is that which is happening and because of which he's not able to see? That's, that's the kind of um, the thinking which goes on in his mind. So when you use denial, you simply refuse to accept the truth or reality of a fact or an experience. 
So in, in, when, when you are in a denial, the reality is distorted to make it suit to the individual's wishes. In psychology, it's called denial of cycle. There are various terminologies which are used. In that one is the denial of cycle, which tells the inability to acknowledge what is actually happening. Okay, and a study which is published in the Psychomatic Bulletin and Review shows that most adults think of themselves as younger than their physical age. Now, if you see, according to that study, uh, this kind of denial starts at the age of 25. Before the age of 25, many people feel older than, than they are, right? They, they want uh, their views to be heard. They want people to take them seriously. So they project themselves as little older than what they are. But when they cross 25, the reverse happens. And the people start to feel 20% younger than their age. This becomes more pronounced after they turn 40. The study theorizes that this is because of a defensive age denial mentality and the stigma against the elderly people. Now, there are various stages of denials. Um, um, so if you consider uh, Presbyo uh, going through these stages of denial, he might go through the entire stages of denial or there may be a couple of things which he will uh, go through and then go to the stage of acceptance. The first one is denial, right? The denial per se. So what is it? When a person has was told that he has to uh, wear glasses or he requires a certain correction for Nia or he requires a kind of correction over the glasses he's wearing, the first thing will be uh, something like an avoidance, right? He's pretty confused why he requires glasses. So far I have used um, uh, no correction, no kind of glasses or no extra glasses for reading. And now suddenly why is that I require glasses? The first stage is kind of a denial. The, sixth, the next one is anger. So in which case the person, uh, the patient goes through anxiety and frustration. So uh, frustration because he's no longer able to see the uh, near prints clearly. And the next stage will be the stage of bargaining where he knows something is wrong and he also knows it is getting increasingly frustrating to senior objects. So he reaches out to find more information about this uh, particular problem he has. Either he goes to the net, he talks to the people to find out more information about it. The next stage is depression where he, uh, whether the patient feels helpless that, you know, uh, he cannot, uh, I mean, um, help himself better without any correction. So a kind of helplessness uh, seeps in. And the last one is acceptance. So in the acceptance, he explores options. So he understands that he requires some form of uh, correction. He requires some form of help uh, to uh, read and uh, to do near tasks. And so he starts looking at remedial options, maybe like glasses, maybe contact lenses, maybe simple vision glasses, whatever it is. Can some kind of a remedial measures be taken? So that's what he sees. So a uh, presbyopic per se either goes through the entire process of stages or maybe the first stage alone or the first and the second and the last stage. It depends. It varies from individual to individual. So the end point of the denial stage is the understanding that if 40 is the new 30, then denial is the new acceptance. So what triggers these denial? What triggers these stages? So the main reason is the, uh, the gap between reality and uh, the actual, uh, the myths which is uh, going on, right? So now if you see this famous uh, South Asian picture, you see an elephant and uh, the, the uh, group of six people, six blind men were taken to an elephant and they were asked to feel the elephant and tell them how the elephant looks like. Now, one of the blind person, uh, you know, touches the trunk and uh, he says the different, uh, the elephant looks like this. And, and another person touches the leg of the elephant and he says the elephant looks like a pillar. And so there are different views and different uh, uh, conceptions about what is this presbyopia and what it really is. So listening to various narratives from people. So some of these misconceptions are the power of the eye will reduce. Of course, you all, all of us would have um, you know, heard all these from the patients. You will get accustomed to it and you can't remain without it. People judge you if you wear glasses. Glasses worsen your vision. 
they are thicker than normal glasses so there are i mean there are i mean i'm sure there are so many other things which people tell uh, about this presbyopia and why they should not wear glasses immediately and even they tell uh, people that you know uh, if you wear glasses for a longer period of time you get addicted to it so these are some of the misconceptions which floats around and there as you all know there is a gap in uh, understanding the reality and uh, what are the misconceptions so we know that there is a gap instead of looking at the gap and instead of complaining about it can we mind this gap can we use these uh, narratives can we use these um, you know, problems which the patient uh, explains to us as something as a challenge and explain them educate them and tell them why they had to use glasses so mind the gap so educate the patient so why this denial happens so this denial happens because that there is uh, they feel that there is a transition to glasses either from um, no glasses to a glasses for near or uh, to an existing glasses to a uh, to an added correction for near or some other form of correction it reduce it it gives reduced quality of life substantial economic burden and considerable data indicates that the rate of depression and anxiety are elevated among people with visual challenges so it is essential to develop more effective interventions and expand access to services to improve the detection and the treatment so how can we move past the denial how can we get rid of this denial how can we help the patient so we had to explain or educate the patient honestly what why they fear wearing glasses is it a cosmetic reason is it that they fear fear that you know they will continue wearing glasses is that something they fear that you know once you start wearing glasses you get addicted to what is actually the reason for the fear the second one is think about the potential negative consequences of not taking action so explain the patient that if they don't wear glasses or if they don't wear any form of correction for near for a certain period of time what is the problems they can have uh, from um, a strain to their eyes to strain on the accommodative mechanism you know i mean reduce quality of life there could be a lot of things which is at stake when the patient doesn't take a proper corrective action allow yourself allow allow yourself to express the fears their fears and emotions and try to identify irrational beliefs about your about their situation so tell them that there is nothing wrong with it it is natural and uh, you know um this is a part of a phase which go which will go away all right so um we will take few cases to understand this um this is the first case if you can see this um picture this gentleman wears i mean doesn't wear any correction but he looks at the uh, newspaper okay and you can see he is squeezing his eyes to and straining himself to see clearly his his prescription is around plano uh, his vision is 6 by 6 in both the eyes his addition is around 1.25 plus 1.25 yen 6 in both the eyes there is no other problems he uses no correction and he says he has strong eyes and he has no complaints and he feels he can manage without glasses okay so think about it from a perspective of denial and tell me how we can handle this if you can type this on uh, your answers on facebook chat right i'll give you one minute time right can you please type whatever you feel how you can handle this case so if you can see this picture here this guy uh, he has a laptop he has a newspaper and his visual um, challenges are that he has to look at near and also Uh, a intermediate distance but he doesn't use a correction probably because he is a new presbyopic he doesn't feel like he needs glasses right now he has that conception in his mind that you know he doesn't require a correction and he can probably still continue without any corrections to see near and computer so how can we handle this from a perspective of denial so i'll give another 10 more seconds
Okay. Um, Anita, what were the answers? So we have a couple of them coming in frame. So okay. uh, can we so wait for some more time? Okay, we can take up the answers as and when they are typing in. So there's one suggestion which says, uh, give a good uh, progressive addition lenses, uh, lens through good counseling. Another person uh, would like to suggest that we can ask him on the problem he's facing uh, with respect to reading, texting, or uh, he might feel fatigue at the end of the day. So that kind of probing questions can be put forth. So another person... Um, uh, wants to share that uh, you can take a good uh, techno sales approach, offer a good demonstration and uh, also ask if uh, you feel fatigue after one hour. Excellent. So, yeah, very good. I mean, from a denial perspective, probably, you know, all these plus, plus some of the answers which I have uh, mentioned, like it's a, we can explain uh, the patient that it's a normal aging change. Everyone goes through it because as I told you, we are just looking at the uh, denial phase alone, how we can handle the denial phase. So not wearing glasses makes your eyes work harder, just like how one of the person has uh, given the answer. So allow your eyes to work less hard, which reduces eye strain and all other unpleasant effects of not wearing your glasses. Most importantly, also tell them corrective glasses allows you to see clearly. Right. These are some of the, uh, upper, I mean, along with whatever uh, suggestion, they were very good suggestions. So along with those suggestions, these could be some of the answers which we can, as practitioners and optician, provide the patient. And not wearing glasses can cause these conditions to get worse or become a permanent problem. We will take another case. Okay. Uh, so the first case was that he was not wearing any uh, correction. So this is a case where the, the, the patient is in a later presbyopic uh, age. So a husband brings wife for an eye exam and following are the details of the uh, case. So the patient's age is 53 year old. His prescription for distance is plus 1.25 diopters. Vision is six by six. Addition is plus two diopters per both the eyes. The person works in, uh, in retail as a salesperson. The patient was given glasses before, but she was not using it. So she knows that she has to have some kind of correction, right? And, but she's not using it and complains of headache. And he wants to know if any other major problems are there in the eye. So this is the case. So unlike the previous case where the patient is in the eye, so here the patient has already accepted the fact that there is some form of intervention which is required, but she's not using it. Now, how will we handle this case? So again, I will give you uh, one minute time. So please type in your answers in the um, uh, chat. So if you see this picture here, right? Um, imagine this lady has this problem, right? And uh, she is not able to see clearly for Nia. And she always, she, you can see she's using her eyes to see, right? This is a live case, which I saw and uh, this patient um, uh, had a mannerism wherein she always uses her eyes. She drives a lot. She goes around in bike, but she's never wore, wore her glasses. So if that is the case, now how will you handle it? So another uh, 20 seconds. Prem, I think you would need to give a couple of more seconds because there could be a delay in um, live uh, streaming with the right. Facebook page. Also. Okay, we'll give you one, we'll give one more minute. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. I can kind of read out the answers that have uh, come in or the suggestions that have uh, come in. Okay. So um, we have a uh, lot many comments coming from the Facebook live audience. So a couple okay. of them being, uh, we can explain about presbyopia and the options in layman terms, uh, highlight multiple benefits of progressive addition uh, lenses, enhance productivity and performance through progressive addition lens. Okay. Very good. Yes. Right. I mean, um, those are, uh, yeah, those are from a perspective of uh, uh, giving a correction, but that those are good answers. But also from a point of a psychology point of view, how will you handle this case? 
so this this lady has a, a certain psyche that she doesn't want to use glasses so what could be the reason and how can we handle this right uh, so we'll we'll take some more time another uh, 15 seconds so those are very good answers uh, thank you so another um answer is like we can advise her about usage of glasses and highlight the multiple benefits of uh, pal very good um, and some provide success stories of people with pal very good excellent excellent it's very good very good answers um i will just um uh, show you some of the answers which i have written so acceptance so uh, this probably this entire case is as i told you is a kind of acceptance the patient is accepted that something wrong is there so she requires a correction so the main thing is how does she cope up how does she cope up right now is she is she squinting if you can see this picture she is squinting does she put more light so how does she cope up so that can give us some pointer to 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 uh, advise her on the course forward whether she requires we can tell her why uh, wearing glasses is important as one of the uh, chat comments were is it cosmetic reasons because of which she is not wearing glasses so related with her complaint so she had complaint of headache and fatigue so we can we can advise her based on whatever it is why you have this problem is because you are not using glasses and why this is entire thing is happening is because eyes has to work really hard to focus and it was expected you can also tell that it was expected that she would need to wear her glasses more frequently as she continues to age and it was also expected that the prescription would need to be changed over time and uh, yes uh, like some of the answers in the chat i mean we can always tell her why uh, progressive lenses or any other correction is important important in this case okay moving on now um, having uh, understood a little bit about the psychology and denial and acceptance now we also have to understand little bit about myopia prevalence right i mean if you see in india nearly one third of adults in india have uncorrected presbyopia so that's a huge number so nearly just 33 percentage of people are wearing some form of correction for presbyopia it's not progressive so progressive numbers will be relatively very very less but the uh, any form of correction is not being used by nearly one third of adults in india and that leads to a lot of gap in productivity in terms of uh, you know the quality of life and so on and so forth so before we can go any further we also had to understand what is the uh, world of the presbyopia the emerging presbyopia who are you know have a lot of different type of visual needs and profile compared to what it was before so we have to understand what is the world of presbyopia so they use lot of digital devices and if you see a uh, study show that mo- uh, the uh, the age wise distribution of accessing internet if you see from ton- uh, 35 uh, 25 to 34 or 35 to 44 till 64 years of age there is nearly 90 percentage of people who use digital gadgets both male and female and also it tells that you know the smaller the screen closer the distance of use so they you know that there are different types of digital devices you have desktop laptops you have tablets you have uh, i mean uh, uh, mobile phones of different sizes where the screen size are different so the smaller the screen you see the closer you had to bring the device to your eyes so closer you bring to your uh, closer you bring the screen to your eye the more is the accommodative demand so more is the accommodative demand the more is the need for the correction the new technologies and the use of digital media are undeniably changing the postural and behavioral pattern of users so you the more technology uh, we bring in into our lives and uh, we use more of these digital uh, media it is changing the postural and behavioral patterns so if you see this picture <clears throat> it gives you an idea of the usage of digital devices during uh, various time of a day um this is a uh, survey which was done in europe it's not in india so if you see uh, uh, during daytime people use pcs and mobile phones are used peak in the early evenings and uh, during night time people use tablets 
and the study also says wearers spend up to 10 hours on various kind of screens and this also uh, press bay also does a lot of multitask and the next thing uh, you have to understand about the uh, the world of a press bay is the flexibility of their working environment especially when you see now work from home you can see different type of gadgets used different type of uh, postural dynamics different type of illumination different type of setup so it changes the entire thing um, is not fixed there is quite a bit of challenges for a press bay and most of them have uh, lead a quite a good active lifestyle um, most of them you know travel some of them travel some of them party some of them are very active in sports they go to gym they cycle right they have a very very active lifestyle now have now what is this uh, we uh, when we see the first slide we discussed about what is presbyopia and presbyopia as a definition per se we said around 40 years of age it starts but with the kind of gadgets usage and lifestyle there is an increased demand on the accommodative mechanism right if you see the studies if you can see the study um around 38 years of age nearly 36 percentage of people require some form of presbyopic correction so 40 years as a definition is changing is because of the type of lifestyle and gadgets we use and there is a considerable percentage of people who exhibit early presbyopic symptoms so what are the challenges we have we have we saw uh, one challenge as Uh, handling the denial, handling the acceptance part. We saw one challenge as um, understanding the presbyopic world, and also there are more challenges like occupation. What is the type of occupation the patient has? What is the working distance in which he uses the gadget? What is the preference of usage? At what distance? At what type of gadgets? And how he wants to use them? What is the lifestyle of a person? Does he does he only uh, sits indoor? Does he travel? and uh, i mean uh, does he work in a cubicle you know there are so many types of lifestyle does he travel a lot does he have a marketing profile does he have to look at different people does he has to paint so there is a quite a bit of challenges there are a lot of information which has to be deciphered before you can actually provide a presbyopic solution let's take one more case okay this is a case of a 41 year old male and he presents with the following complaint so the prescription is only minus 0.25 for distance and uh, the addition is around plus 1 so the, uh, the the occupation of this person is teacher and he feels he can manage with uh, ready made readers right now the all other parameters for this patient is correct now forget about the denial part now let's concentrate on the lifestyle and other part how do you think we can manage this particular patient i will give you the same 2 minutes time um please um just go through this case and type in your answers so if you see this picture here so this guy uh, imagine he is a teacher right so his visual profile so uh, uh, kindly think about the profile of a teacher um how does the uh, what is the profile of the teacher right now does he have only desk work or does he have uh, uh, only uh, have only he has to look at the uh, students and the blackboard so just go through just um, pictureize a teacher of now um, and see how you can manage this case so um so if you can see this picture this gentleman is using his glasses and uh, he is also trying to um, adjust his glasses or who his glasses um uh, why he is doing that probably he is not very comfortable with the reading glasses probably uh, he requires a different kind of correction so what is that uh, what is that which this guy requires and how will you manage this case so we already have an answer coming up uh, frame okay. so they say that teachers are meant to do multitasking and readers cannot uh, do uh, or serve the purpose so only mm. progressive addition lens can help him 
and also they need to lead from the front in adopting the best in technology and the options Absolutely. so um he uses latest gadgets and readers are century old uh, options which are outdated so nice. another answer that we perceived is he is a slight myope so he can manage but since teachers have to look at all distances we need to advise him on a progressive addition lens excellent so we have a facebook audience who likes to say that he has to use progressives because uh, he has to change in the focal length because of the varying distances and the task that he needs to perform excellent very so good. lot many people are um, converging uh, on the view that progressive addition lenses are the lenses of choice for uh, this particular case excellent okay so we will also see what is that uh, um, we have put as an answer so we can tell the patient first reiterate reassure him that he has a strong eyesight for distance you can tell you can continue readers but intermediate range may not be covered hence can cause eye strain as you as um, uh, some of them as rightly said teacher has multiple visual tasks and visual range which is required he has to look at the uh, board he has to look at students he has to look at the laptop he has to look at uh, the correcting papers and all those stuff there's a lot of multitasking which is required so readers if he has to wear it he has to wear remove it he has to as you can see in the picture he might have to go front go back he has to adjust his posture he might have to take multiple pairs of lenses cosmetically it may not look good right so all these uh, could be a problem for this particular patient as rightly pointed out by many uh, uh, many of the uh, people in the chat that progressive addition lenses could could have been the best choice for this particular patient now let's also see what are the options for the spectacles for which a presbyopic uh, person has he has a reading glass uh, as an option and he has an option of bifocals he has an option of trifocals and he also has an option of progressive lenses now uh what does the reading uh, glasses have reading glasses will give you an excellent near vision but the intermediate and the distance vision is going to be blurred whereas in the reading glasses i mean uh, you, this picture also tells the same thing and you can see here the field of vision with the reading glasses is pretty limited and if you go into bifocals and trifocals bifocals has a demarcation line and also it covers the distance and near but not the intermediate portion the trifocals on the other hand can give a vision for both distance intermediate and near but it has a demarcation line for near and distance uh, near and intermediate so that cosmetically it is, doesn't look good progressive lenses on the other hand provides a very seamless vision from distance intermediate and near and uh, without any problems right so what are the advantages of using a progressive addition lenses Pro progressive addition lenses provides a complete solution for both distance intermediate and near for both hematropes and hematropes and offers a great visual flexibility it doesn't have a demarcation line <clears throat> so cosmetically it looks very good no image jump like bifocal lenses it also provides comfortable intermediate vision it provides continuous support to the eyes accommodation in the sense like reading glasses for example uh, provides that kind of an accommodation for reading and bifocals it get disrupted in two distance and near it doesn't cover the intermediate whereas um, the uh, progressive lenses since it cover as you can see in this picture it covers the near intermediate and distance so it continuous supports the eyes accommodation it also it uh, helps you to have a continuous perception of space which gets broken in terms of bifocal and limited in terms of a single vision lens and uh, progressive lenses also there are various designs and technology which are available to improve the quality of vision and comfort and it can be customized to individual visual requirements according to visual requirements uh, and the lifestyle of a person you can actually customize a kind of progressive to a person the designs can also be made uh, for uh, visual behaviors in terms of personalized lenses where you see the patient's visual behavior and then try to map that take all those uh, lenses and tailor make a lens for the particular patient and you also have designs which are called digressive lenses for occupational needs which is like you know for a specific occupation like for a person who is working in a cubicle and he wants a vision only in that range 
uh, instead of a, a design wherein the power progresses from distance to near, we can have a lens which has a design which digresses from near to distance, providing him the visual range for that two or three meter distance, and it provides a very, very uh, wide field of view. Now, from a PAL satisfaction perspective, studies say that high satisfaction of progressive addition lenses against other types of presbyopic correction, right? I mean, people who are put into progressive lenses, and it also, again, depends on the right type of patient you uh, give a progressive lens and the right type of dispensing in terms of frame selection to lens selection to measurements to markings and uh, proper dispensing and counseling if all these things are done in a right way then it results in a high satisfaction of progressive addition lens and it also says that younger presbyopes seem to adapt faster than the uh, person who have already used a bifocal for a certain period of time or a trifocal for a certain period of time or a near vision glasses for a certain period of time, you put them, and a younger person uh, who put you put straight into progressives adapts faster. It is better to start, that's why it's better to start the paper, and most of the studies say it's better to start with the proper recommendation of progressive addition lens. So in terms of dispensing, first we have to look at all these challenges which we have discussed so far, and take them and convert them into opportunities, right? And uh, an eyewear professional like an optometrist or an ophthalmologist or an optician plays a very, very important role in um, uh, driving this recommendation. Uh, in fact, uh, an eye care, eyewear professional recommendation is a key driver for 91% of pal wearers. So let's say we have seen uh, quite a bit of uh, things. Uh, we have seen about uh, acceptance. We have seen about denial. We have seen about lifestyle. We have seen about... Uh, um, um, you know, uh, different types of uh, designs. Now, let's see everything together in this particular case. Now, this patient is a 42-year-old female, is complaining of difficulty for reading and feels her old glasses are not enough for her. She has already tested with an optometrist, but wants to know if she can continue with, with her present glasses and is not sure why she got this problem for the past six months only. So if you can see, she is having uh, a doubt whether this prescription is right, whether she really requires glasses, and she also feels whether she can continue with the whole prescription. Her prescription for uh, the whole prescription was both a minus 3.75 diaprosphere. Her present glasses are minus 3.75 diaprosphere for distance, vision is 6 by 6, addition is plus 1 for near, vision is N6. The person is a marketing executive and she travels extensively and is fashion conscious. So now let's put the entire thing, whatever we have seen uh, in this presentation, let's use all that and tell how we'll handle this particular case. So I am just um, starting the time. Uh, please uh, type in your answers in the chat box. Uh, we'll give two minutes. So if you can see in this picture, right, uh, this lady is doing something similar to what is written in this complaint. So this patient is, uh, is you know, taking the glasses off and she's seeing and, and she's not able to see clear with that. So she's squeezing her eyes to see the uh, mobile clearly, right? So, so if we you can, have, yeah. We have answers coming in frame. So yeah. pals yeah. apparently uh, are the first and best First, best and last option for her as it helps in fashion function and multitasking as well. So okay. another person says that she's a marketing person. She does multitasking, so it will definitely require a pal. Yes. Um, also, uh, more value add-ons like transitions, better co coatings are available only in pals. So there's no requirement to take out these uh, glasses or lenses. Very good, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's uh, the patient may be myopic, but still needs PAL because of the constant usage facility that it uh, gives you. Excellent. Okay. So any answers pertaining to um, she? I mean, see if you can see she has already tested with an optometrist, but wants to know if she can continue with the present Oryx. So she has that particular, uh, you know, uh, doubt in her mind. 
All right. Um, any answers from that perspective? But very good answers that you know um, that progressive addition lenses and uh, since a marketing perspective, I mean transitions and coatings and uh, why pal is better. She need not remove her glasses and read. Very good answers. Um, is there any other answers coming or can I? Um, okay, uh, I would like, I would, uh, you can add on uh, Anita. I mean, I will just uh, tell what all answers are sure. mentioned here. So first, um, because I, I told you this case, we have to look at totality from the denial phase to the lifestyle challenges and all those things. So first, educate the patient, tell her what is presbyopia, tell her it's normal, everyone gets it, reassure her. Tell her though near vision can be managed without glasses, the customary near distance has to be compromised and the reading material has to be held closer. So she is 3.75. Like say a four adapter. So her reading point is going to be around 25 centimeters. So she might have to see there, right? I mean, uh, uh, so um, without glasses, eyes had to work harder and that can strain your eyes. The intermediate vision might suffer and had to really concentrate more to see clear. And also we had to keep in, uh, take into account the lifestyle uh, related uh, tasks like travels and she's also passion conscious. So Ideally, as the, um, the, the suggestions from uh, many of you, right, you know, the progressive addition lenses are the best type of lenses. And we also know that there are various types of designs which are available, which can be tailor-made for our occupation, along with different types of coatings and photochromatics and other kind of designs. So in a nutshell, if you want to see, First, understand the psychology of a presbyopic patient. Make an effort to learn and help the patient to uh, get rid of the fear of denial and um, help them uh, to understand that this is something which happens, which is here to stay. And they might have to wear a certain correction. Only one third of presbyopes wear a presbyopic correction. Understand the world of presbyope, which is evolving and demanding um, all types of job requires various types of challenges. Understand that. Understand what is an early press by you. What are the challenges he faces, right? And, um, you know, uh, practitioner's role in prescribing and dispensing. What is the practitioner's role? So how can we take all these as a challenge and how can we use that to suggest the right type of lenses to the patient? And also the options for press biopsy. There are various options of, uh, which is available for pre press biops like single vision, bifocal, trifocal, progressives, occupational lenses. So which are the ones which is the right ones for the patient? And why it is important to, uh, uh, to look at the choice of, press bio, choice of progressive addition lenses as the first choice for a press biop. And also progressive addition lenses and its advantages over other form of spectacle correction. So uh, jump in and in case a person has a problem, um, uh, understand that uh, it is normal for a presbyopic patient to feel, um, to feel uh, apprehensive, to ask a lot of questions, um, uh, you know, uh, to see that, you know, whether they can be without glasses for some time. It's our duty as practitioners and opticians to explain the patient on what is this presbyopia, what, why is it there, and what does it do, what, uh, what kind of a correction can be given, and why correction has to be given, and how it helps you to alleviate the symptoms of eye strain and makes uh, the life easier for them. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Prem, for this uh, wonderful session. In fact, I must congratulate the, uh, our audience both on uh, Facebook Live as well as the Zoom platform. They have been highly interactive. I mean, it was a beautiful session because answers have been pouring in and I had a tough time juggling between the uh, Zoom platform and the uh, Facebook Live page. I mean, uh, answers are still uh, pouring in, I would say. Thank you for this beautiful session and taking us through the uh, psych, uh, psychology behind a pre presbyop, a topic which is seldom um, addressed.
and we don't give much of a thought as practitioners also i mean the minute we come across a press bio immediately we jump okay this addition that addition what can be given we hardly think what is running behind in his head at what emotional state he or she is in and you threw so much of light on the psychology of the presbyter which was a very beautiful thing and i think in future each one of us will definitely look at a presbyter as a person first and then um, add the presbyopia uh, aspect to it i mean thanks for this wonderful uh, session frame um, so and in case i have Just sure, sure, Lakshmi. Yeah, uh, Prem, excellent, excellent session. Thanks a ton for this because I think the cases were unique. Uh, the way you uh, framed the cases were just superb, uh, out of the world. And I think this is, uh, you know, for people who are uh, listening, I think uh, here is uh, such a, um, you know, a pointer to say um, um, prescribing spectacles or. you know giving correction to press by op is not just a press of a button and then giving it i think yeah. uh, this is a really testimony to that saying don't uh, trivialize dispensing or uh, you know uh, refraction or uh, uh, it to something that you know that you can just do do away with whatever um, is there or uh, handing over just reading glasses to anybody and everybody uh, that it is yeah. not as simple uh, as that uh, i think uh, as uh, an optometric profession uh, the way you approach the topic uh, to actually decipher what is the what's the um, you know daily routine of the person or what's what's what category that the person fits into and then after that giving the appropriate correction excellent prem uh, thank you really enjoyed i just wanted to add on a couple of things also uh, maybe a simple way of uh, actually motivating a uh, person for progressive lens is a simple demonstration you know uh, so if you just have three lenses one a uh, bifocal and one a uh, single vision and one another progressive lenses just mark it as a b c and then you can just ask them to find the difference uh, i'm sure no uh, the uh, the difference is quite obvious and then you tell them that uh, cosmetically uh, bifocal may not be suitable this lens may not may you may have to compromise a lot in terms of visual task but the third option which you have is something uh, which has got the best of both it has got cosmesis as the same time your vision uh, visual comfort is going to be excellent with the third choice now you pick your choice i think uh, that is a very uh, easy way to explain uh, the difference between a bifocal and uh, a progressive lens because it's uh, instead of actually talking about intermediate distance and near uh, technically i think it is for a customer it will be very easy to apprehend Uh, that uh, 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 cosmetically this may not be suitable for me, and visually the second choice may not be suitable for me. So the third choice automatically blending both, and that is where you have progressive lenses. That could be one way of easy demonstration for uh, in yeah. terms of that. And another one more important thing is in terms of uh, bifocal lenses. We all need to understand that it is a very old technology. you know if you it is more than 200 years old technology and uh, one thing which we also need to as practitioners understand as well as uh, inform our customers that uh, even at home we don't use any gadget more than 5 years old you know uh, we always want the best and the latest for our uh, house right or for our use and eyes being very very in, uh, important uh, we uh, qual uh, man progressive lenses would be the best uh, alternative in terms of vision in terms of comfort and in terms of uh, convenience also so maybe try to give especially when you're dealing with presbyopes or any customer as such try to give examples so that uh, they can easily uh, understand uh, things in their own language correct and also there are so many types of designs which are available mm -hmm. right i mean uh, yes. if you can map the person's requirement visual requirements and um and if we can holistically understand um his uh, you know occupation and his lifestyle and things so it is not like before where there was one type of design and you had to give a particular design so based on individualization you can give it's not necessary that you have to give a personalized lens so say but you can give there are so many types of design which can be provided to the patient based on the visual requirements well said correct a small question prem yeah uh so if what would you say to somebody let's say uh, we advise some kind of questionnaire 
for patients who walk in just to know their lifestyle and you know um, uh, li- uh, activities and all of that uh, and then you know usually the answer that comes back is are kiske paas time hai or oh in a busy clinic uh, we don't have time to you know uh, for requestness and things like that um, yeah. so what would be your uh, comment uh, on this i i i think um, i mean sir, there will be some uh, though uh, in this fast paced world there is very little time for uh, you know social interaction and all those things but um, from an occupation perspective i'll give you an example okay i mean uh, uh, there was a, a, a surgeon uh, who was seen for uh, glasses and um, he wanted uh, uh, which his social requirement was straightforward he said i am in the clinic i am using a reading glasses i want to uh, people have suggested me progressives give me a progressive but then um, when we asked about the lifestyle and stuff like that so he said there is not much you know uh, i mean like he goes to the clinic he goes back to his house so that's the only thing but he travels a lot okay so that is also part of his lifestyle okay right now he goes and uh, he uh, he meets different people um, you know he he is part of uh, Uh, panel in a board room and all those things different boards so there were different types of lifestyle that itself requires mapping of um, his um, uh, you know it's not necessary that lifestyle required to have a hobby he travels you know he, he uh, do a cycling and all those things so one thing is like one glasses may not fit for everything so one progressive lenses may not fit for uh, a patient for his visual task his uh, sports task and other things maybe you might have to look at different types of glasses tinted lenses and uh, coatings and different things but it is a very good uh, thing which you said lakshmi that you know give a question and try to understand probably they may not tell you that uh, traveling so much also is a kind of uh, you know um, uh, a different type of a lifestyle right then you might have to custom custom make uh, a different type of design provide a different type of glasses to him so it's very good that you give a questioner try to understand maybe if they say that maybe ask little more few more questions try to decipher from their answers that you know this is not just an occupation there are few things which is added to it and try to uh, map that to provide proper solutions to him this actually reminds me of a patient dentist okay uh, in their profession uh, for normal use we can prescribe progressives but then when it comes to it is kind of slightly intermediate distance right they sometimes go close or sometimes move uh, further away uh, so a uh, couple of cases what we recommended was you know whether you seen that magnetic readers mm-hmm. uh, so we said because progressive didn't work progressive worked yeah, in these we can give degressive lenses uh... yeah that also that that also but they have to again look through the microscope sometimes so even that they would so we have to give single vision for work and then after that uh, in other time like consulting hours or over the uh, counter uh, um, i mean over the table discussions or at home and other other lifestyle this thing that you will have to give a progressive so that was something i thought uh, i just need to mention because you mentioned a surgeon so i thought and that is one more profession where uh, it is slightly different yeah it is different it is demanding i mean uh, uh, it is better uh, um, that's why the interaction with the patient is very important you get as much information from the mm, patient as possible yeah. you know during the course of it's not necessary that you have to finish your examination and then sit for 5 minutes and ask questions during the course of examination itself you can you can keep asking these questions one by one and at the end of the uh, examination you would have got some 10 12 points which will suggest you what type of proper correction to go for well said uh, i would also uh, in fact i was also thinking this because when you do history taking you know so normally in a practice you don't have too much of things to ask in terms of uh, the disease and all all those things so maybe you may get a lot of negative histories also so as a part of your history uh, taking you can also talk about uh, the lifestyle and uh, uh, like how rightly prem said during the course of your testing you can keep on asking questions so that by the time you finish you arrive at uh, the answers as to what exactly he needs and that is very important in terms of prescribing the right solutions 
and uh, one more important thing is when you actually recommend the solutions try to link back to his uh, needs i think uh, it's easy to say okay you take this but then uh, the uh, the acceptance will happen only when the customer knows why he needs it so you need to link back to his uh, whatever his needs are i think that is where the linking has to happen and that is what would give the satisfaction to the customer great discussions happening so i think before we wind up one last uh, thing that i would like to open up uh, to all of you now that prem anand lakshmi all of you are practitioners as well so uh, when you're talking about a press bio is it a good practice to start talking about what press biopia is all about and kind of brief them as to what are the multiple options that are available uh, towards correction of uh, press biopia uh, when you come across a pre press bio because most of the customers we have been seeing them from their childhood days and they transition you know to different phases so is it not a good practice that we start talking to them earlier just so that they are you know emotionally and mentally prepared and more accepting to the fact that they are reaching that age and they would be transitioning transitioning to uh, another design of uh, spectacles sooner or later so what is your take on that Prem, you want to go first? Yeah, um, yeah. The, the, it's a yes sir or yes and no. Uh, because you know, <laughs> people don't like aging. Uh, that's what I was trying to. Depends on the person, I think. No, Prem, yes. what do you say? It's not yeah. right in a person. <laughs> Sometimes uh, this can also have a negative effect. So. Negative, yeah. yeah. You can tell that you know they can ask back. They can have, uh, shout back saying, "Do you think I'm old? Do, do you think I look old and stuff?" <laughs> Yeah. So you have to be a little careful. Uh, guys, probably maybe a little bit uh, accepting. Uh, so. Ah, don't say that. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, fully I mean, it's, conscious. It's, uh, very fully conscious. But I mean, as I told you, uh, Anita, it's yes and no, right? I mean, it's based on a, a patient. I mean, you know, because you are going to counsel at the end. So probably during the course of the examination, you will know what is that the patient. how is the patient what is the psyche of the patient and accordingly if you feel that you know uh, you know the person um, as you said you know them for some time and they are coming to you uh, yes you can talk there is no problem but then yeah, if Anita, the patient is new one you know it's yeah, better what i would to, say is uh, depending on what time they are presenting to you at uh, with some see they have come to you because they have an issue or for a regular eye exam or something like that right so depending on whether they they are let's say 38 39 if you're going to order a change in the prescription right uh, i think that's when you can raise the topic uh, if they are 38 or 39 or something like that then you can always raise the topic saying that yes there's a change in prescription uh, maybe for distance okay but then you say that this is something that you know will change again maybe in a couple of years because of so and so reason and stuff so it depends on what you're actually do, doing during that visit Uh, especially between let's say 37 to 40 if somebody is visiting you uh, during that time and you already have uh, you know the patient has been loyal to you for a long time uh, it depends for what reason they've come and then you can maybe start talking to them about that topic but if the patient is an emetrop right i wouldn't really bother to raise the topic at that time uh, and i'll say like you know um, it, uh, 40 and above 40 you know these are things that to do happen or whatever and if they if they are if they say if they come around 40 and they say well you know i came couple of years back uh, you should have told me about this or something like that then you can always say well there is a solution it's not that this can't be corrected uh, and stuff so i think um giving too much also sometimes is a hassle anita yeah. uh, this is what i've seen i don't know depends as i said depends on the patient psyche so if the if there is a change in the prescription uh, especially 38 39 Uh, then i think there is a very valid reason you tell them uh, what to expect at 40 uh, because see when they invest on a spectacle right they always think it's going to last for like 4 5 years or something like that that's the assumption with which uh, a person comes to you so that assumption i think you should always break uh, if it is there uh, during that pre press topic age but otherwise i think as and when uh, people come to you it's it's okay to tell them and uh, during that time otherwise it's like uh, because uh, the i'll tell you where once it kind of backfired also so uh, this was long long back 
um and then when you say that you know you expect and then the person was 42 but still managing okay uh, and then they say well you know see i i have not fallen into the group that you told me about and stuff like that so there's always that also uh, <laughs> you know we ourselves are in denial forget the patient you know <laughs> so i think it's uh, each person will be different so i think we just deal with Uh, that yeah, understand the customer and then yeah. which in too much information yeah. sometimes also problematic yes. sometimes yes totally agree to all of this because <laughs> i being a press by op i was in denial for a long long time yeah. rather yeah, than that's what i'm depression. telling you i'm still in depression i would be <laughs> <laughs> so it's a tough thing i mean uh, we have one last question from our uh, facebook audience irene wants to know do you have a suggestion as to how to politely say you need reading glasses um, uh, which all know it's about aging to a woman how can you politely put it across that she would require reading glasses no the best thing which i would do is i mean uh, during uh, the course of the examination itself ask her to read ask her to uh, you know see how she uh, sees without glasses and with glasses and politely tell her that you know this is something which uh, you know uh, which happens and we can also tell her that you know she can manage without glasses for some time maybe putting light and squeezing her eyes or something like that but it is not required so maybe education per se i think is the best thing to do um you know uh, uh, have some as i uh, stories as one of the uh, chat thing chat one one person from chat said tell some story i mean uh, success stories similar people who have had apprehensions and who have taken glasses you know and uh, you can also tell that you know um, uh, the, the, these glasses are kind of fashion uh, fashion accessory as well so for, i mean of course you have to educate i mean education is the i think education and demonstration i think it's a best way to explain that picture yeah you can ask also if the lady has got some problems with some specific tasks you know especially uh, if it's a if she is a woman maybe if you uh, depending upon the atmosphere you know in fact if she is going to be a home maker then ask her what are the problems she faces uh, at near in terms of uh, cooking or in terms of cutting which it could be anything you know or if the person is more of an office person uh, maybe related to task you can just probe and ask if she's got any problems and then tell her these problems can be rectified by using Uh, these uh, solutions i think that would really be uh, hitting the nail on the head saying that you have a problem for this problem this is what is the answer so uh, uh, that could also be uh, more uh, easier for them to understand uh, great answers there so thank you so much i think it's time we wind up thank very you so thing. much anand for this thank you uh, i think excellent stuff. print excellent yeah. i think uh, very you. nicely put yeah uh, the case uh, discussions that you had put forth uh, generated a lot of discussion and i hope there's a lot of take away from this uh, particular session so a lot of learning has happened and i hope the audience find each uh, one of it very useful and uh, please watch out for the oci official facebook page for announcements for the uh, forthcoming uh, sessions that we are planning in the entire year so thank you all for joining us today thank you once again prem for this lovely session and thanks anand for thank all you. your support thank, thank you thank so you much. thank you anita prem and thank you thank you bye thank you bye 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 have a great day bye